I can see that look in your eyes like a thousand. How far does a man have to fall before he can find himself? It was into the darkness for me. The life of addiction and organised crime that I believed to be my salvation was a delusion. It cost me my humanity. I broke free of that life, left everything that I knew, and against all the odds, I built a successful life. But I'd left something in the darkness, something so important that I had to go back. A hundred years before I lived there, it was the Jago, a tenement slum served as a sanctuary for those escaping pursuit. If they made it to the end of Boundary Passage, they were safe. At six years old, I walked into that passage. Although not pursued, I sought sanctuary just the same. It was a journey to last a lifetime. A life lost in the Babylon. I watched the old man and his pals playing cards in the pub. They dressed smart, spoke with humour, and they laughed very loud. But then mum left when I was eight. That was painful. I couldn't afford that pain. We didn't have a care in the world growing up in Shoreditch in the 70s. I felt at home on those streets, selling stolen shoes down at Brick Lane. I never felt like a nine-year-old. I'd stepped up long before that. In the early 80s, I went from working in the post office and selling pills in pubs and clubs and singing in restaurants to addiction and organised crime. The criminal world for me far outweighed slapping a post bag around. But then heroin hit the streets and I signed up. Those Lebanese militia, they were serious people up to their eyeballs in a raging civil war. So it wasn't only the drug squad we was looking out for. We was running anti-surveillance against MI5, running around with holes full of drugs and money. We had to be careful. I've been to dark places, hit with bats, bricks and bottles. I've survived car wrecks and laid semi-conscious after street battles. They caged me like an animal, naked and withdrawing from heroin. So pulling out outside Broadreach House, not long out of prison, my spirit flickered like a dying flame. I had no clue what was in store, but in that house, I found the most terrifying thing that I'd ever faced. The truth. I came a long way in 24 years of recovery, from a hardened drug addicted criminal to a millionaire businessman on a spiritual journey. I had a beautiful family, a dream home on the coast, and 26 years with my wife. But there was one question that wouldn't go away. Who am I? Who would I be without all of this? Finding the answer cost me everything. It took me to the brink of suicide and back to an alleyway in Shoreditch. Nothing's never quite as it seems. Nothing's never quite as it seems. Nothing's never quite as it seems.